Hello, I'm Ken. This time we are discussing how to find the factors of a quadratic function. Let's analyze the question first. The keyword "factor" in the question indicates it is a factoring problem. Besides solving the problem directly, if you have a multiple choice question, it can also be solved by solving the equation or long division. But now we only talk about how to solve directly. There are plenty of methods to do factoring problems. Highest common factor techniques utilizes distributive law to simplify the function. Grouping allows you to simplify polynomials with four or more terms. Also, it is important to memorize the formulas for completing the squares and difference of squares. They are useful factoring techniques. If you know nine by nine multiplication table and the square numbers less than four hundred by heart, that would definitely help you a lot. Now I'm introducing two major methods to factorize the trinomials. The first one is double bridge method. At the beginning, we need to put the terms of trinomial in the proper order. Higher power goes to the left, and constant goes to the right. Step one: We need to break the first and third terms into two parts. For the first term, three x squared can be considered as three x multiplied by x. As for the third term, twelve has six factoring combinations. The number will double if we consider negative signs in it. That's too much, so we neglect the negative sign first. But keep in mind that the two items that negative twelve break apart has to be one positive and one negative. Let's try one times twelve equals to twelve first. Step two: We draw a bridge connecting the outer items and multiply them. Three x multiplied by twelve is thirty-six x. Next, draw another bridge connecting the inner items and multiply them. One times x is one x. Step three: We subtract one x from thirty-six x because the third term is negative. However, the result is nothing close to the second term, sixteen x. So we go back to step one and try the combination of two and six. Draw a bridge connecting the outer items and multiply them together. It gives us eighteen x. Next, draw another bridge connecting the inner items. Multiply them, and we get 2x. We subtract 2x from 18x because the third term is negative. This time we got 16x. Now we can go to step five. We know the number on the bridge should be one positive and one negative. Take a look at the second term, positive 16x. The result of subtraction should be the same as the second term. So we can determine positive 18x minus 2x equals to 16x. The signs needs to go along the bridges and get into the parentheses. Now the problem is solved. Factors of the polynomial are three x minus two and x plus six. The alternative method to factorize the polynomial is called the crisscross method. It is similar to the previous one, but it breaks down the numbers vertically instead of horizontally. We still follow the same procedure. Three x squared equals to three x times x. Twelve equals to one times twelve. Step two: cross multiply and list the result on the right. Step three: as the third term is negative, we subtract the results and get thirty-five x. This combination doesn't work. Then we try two and six. Three x squared equals to three x times x. Twelve equals to two times six. Cross multiply and list the result on the right. As the third term is negative. Subtract the results and get positive 16x or negative 16x. As the second term is positive 16x, it should be negative 2x and positive 18x. The signs go to the numbers on the left, and final answer is 3x minus 2 and x plus 6. There are some common errors such as giving wrong signs to one or more items, and some students may match values in diagonal places when they rewrite the expression. To avoid these errors. We can always expand the polynomial and see if the result is the same as the original expression. This time, you learned about some basic methods of factoring. Distributive law and square formulas should be imprinted in the brain, and we go in detail to talk about double bridge method and crisscross method. By mastering these techniques, you don't even need options in multiple choice questions. More importantly, you can only master these skills by keep on practicing. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.